Hello everyone and welcome to a quick Unity tutorial about game localization. In the world of video games, localization, also known as internationalization or I18N for short, is the process of translating a game in multiple languages with the text and or the audio so that it fits the needs of the users in many countries. Internationalizing texts is usually a bit easier because you don't have to hire dubbing actors for each language, but it still means that you have to translate all of your content, and sometimes, depending on the language, it might fit quite differently on the screen. If the project relies a lot on story and dialogues, you'll also have to ensure that you preserve the tone and meaning of all your lines. But on a more prosaic level, and from a purely technical point of view, i18n is actually fairly easy. So today, let's have a quick look at how we can set up a simple localization feature for a Unity c -sharp game. The very first step in implementing i18n in the game is to separate the actual sentences from the place in the game. Basically, the idea is to differentiate between the abstract reference key of the data, something like npc dialog1, and its real value for various languages, such as hello or bonjour. This way we can easily replace it, or move it to another part of the game if need be, copy it several times without risking discrepancy, or even add new languages that is automatically used everywhere this key appears. By having some fallbacks, you can also ensure that if no translation exists for this key in one or more languages, another arbitrary value is used instead, as to not just get a blank text somewhere. So, in a nutshell, about all i18n systems work the same. First, you define a huge table to map keys to a series of values, one for each language, and then, inside your game, you add those keys in the relevant locations and do a pass to convert them to the right value based on the current language. Ok, now that we're good with the theory, let's see a simple example of how to do this. Let's say we have a UI like this one with three buttons. Play, Settings and Exit. And we want to translate it both in English and in French. Since we only have two languages for now, we could of course hardcode the values and have some switch somewhere in the code. But you see that it would quickly get out of hands if we want to add more languages, or if we have other UIs with the same text somewhere else in the game. Soon enough, we'll just have one cent per language and a complete unorganized project. As we just saw, a better solution is to replace this text with keys and then replace them thanks to a mapping table. Those keys can of course be in any language you want, cause the whole point is that they won't ever appear to the players. Now, let's create a little c -sharp script named text translator and put it on our three texts. Inside this class, we'll say that we need to have a UI text component so that we can get a reference to it in the awake hook, and then we'll take its current content as the key. Then we'll go and pick the value matching this key in a global data table based on the current global language reference. Of course, we then need to create all those global variables. For this, let's make another c -sharp script and turn it into a static class, so that it doesn't require any instance. Since this will be filled with abstract data, it's fine if it's just global to the whole project like this. Inside, I'll have first a string code to tell the game which language I'm currently using, and then a dictionary of dictionaries to map the string key to various values, one for each language. If I run my game, you see that I get my expected English text on the buttons. And if I then change the current language in the data script and reload, I get the French text instead. But of course, we'd like to not have to quit and come back to change the language. So let's see how we can use events to solve this issue. In order for the localization system to react to a language switch, we need to be able to warn all of our text translator instances that we just updated the language and that they need to refresh their content. To do this, the easiest solution is to use an event. The idea is the following. First, we'll define a global Unity event variable in our data script. Then we'll create a new C-sharp script, the language switcher, that we'll use on a little dropdown in our UI. And this will autofill the dropdown of the available languages, 
Then, whenever the value of the dropdown changes, it will both change the current language and invoke our Unity event. Finally, the text translator script will register a callback on this event so that, when it is invoked, the class can run some logic. And more precisely, we want it to run the same logic as before, so we extract it to a private function and call it both at the start of the game and if the language changed event is called. Now, if we rerun the game, we see that when we change the dropdown value, the current language is changed, and our event is fired, and all the button texts are updated properly. However, there is still one big issue with our setup. At the moment, the translations are still all hard-coded in our program. Sure, the data is not hard-coded in the scene anymore, but it is still inside our game files. This means that if we need to change a translation, or if we want to add a new language, we will have to completely rebuild our game. As we start to add more and more resources, and more and more plugins, this will require more and more time. And most importantly, it means that we can't do a live update to the players that already have a copy of our game. The trick here is to rather load up this data from an external source so that the game just contains the translation logic, and not the actual values. The plan is therefore to reference either a path on our computer or an online URL and read the contents of a data source that can be a text file, an XML file or a JSON response, for example. For now, let's keep it simple and read from a local JSON file. To parse it easily, we can prepare a class with a matching structure and then use the JSON utility package to deserialize our file content as the class and instantly get the full nested data. The only tricky part here is that the Unity serialization and deserialization features don't work with dictionaries, so we have to have this intermediate structure where we use lists or arrays to properly get our data from the file. From this point on, just by changing the values inside our external JSON file and restarting the game, we directly get the right text in the UI. The really cool thing is that, of course, we can also have this JSON data be sent by an online API to completely decouple the logic from the data and allow for live updates. I won't go into the details in this tutorial, but here's the code of the online API call and parsing if you're curious. Of course, this assumes that you have another server somewhere actually sending the data. Anyway, with our simple system, we are now able to easily switch from one language to another and have our entire UI readapt to show the right localization. And because we can completely outsource the data, we can even have the community help and participate in the translating to get better and more diverse translations. So here you are, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and that you learned a few things to localize your games. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll see if I can make a tutorial on that topic. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon for more videos on coding and games.